Now, there was a rumour that a couple accidentally knocked him down and presumably in a car. However, there was nothing to suggest there was any truth in this. None of the neighbours heard anything. There was no kind of um, noises in the area, no panicking kind of noises, a car crash, none of that. But it is one of the rumours. Now, there was also a rumour that Corey himself decided to go AOL. AOL? (laughs) AWOL. He wasn't on AOL. Um, Thank you, Mash. Thank you, Miss Paven. Um, Yeah, there was rumours that he actually chose to go AWOL, that he maybe had suspicions that his girlfriend was pregnant. His relationship with his girlfriend was... So they had been together for quite a time, but as part of a swinging couple, they were on lots of different dating websites and they were kind of... Um, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Susie. Um, oh, thank you guys so much. And I just missed someone's heart me as well. So thank you guys who've sent them to me. Um, he was in like this swinging relationship back and forth with his girlfriend. There were some rumours that he was gay. There were people saying that he'd run away because he didn't want people to know it wasn't part of the RAF lifestyle. So I'm just addressing them because they have to be addressed as part of one of the theories. I don't personally believe them, but that has been widely talked about. And if you do some extra research on this case, that's what you'll see. Now, as part of the Suffolk Police, Corey McKeague, um, as part of the Suffolk Police investigation, social media and websites Corey was using were explored, including memberships of swinger sites, um, but they were not implicated in his disappearance. And I think the reason people were so open to it being something to do with that is, um, I can't remember who gifted you yours earlier. I think it might have been um, Birdie, I think maybe. <clears throat> Thank you, Hattie, for the heart puffs. So there are other people that believe that Corey tried to walk back to RAF Honiton and he went missing at another part along that way. But like I said, there was no image ever of him leaving that horseshoe. There was some speculation that he might have tried to walk back to camp after dropping his phone into the bin and that's why his bin was there. Um, oh, what's going on? Happy life. Thank you, happy life. And here's will be also loads of guff. I can't know what's going on. I don't really care. Um, thank you, Disney Forever, and thank you, Jess, and thank you, Lindsay. So, the area between Bury St Edmunds and RAF Honiton is mostly farmland with wooded areas, ditches and ponds. So there's obviously other situations that could have happened, but it would have to have been that somebody picked him up in a car and then drove him out of that horseshoe bend because he's just not on CCTV, unless maybe he left some other kind of like off camera somehow. I believe there was a glitch on one of the cameras that moved that he could have kind of come out. Um, So it's just really, really crazy. We just don't know. Now, we're going to talk about the waste collection company. So the waste collection company deleted all of their data. Now, the reason they did this is because quite quickly people were looking into them, whether somebody had, can someone just delete that person saying go to bed? Because, um, even their um, bio is very strange. Thank you, Holly. Um, Yeah, so basically every single um, waste collection company, Laurie has a, I know Liz, and we have discussed that. And I have said, I'm just going to discuss the other theories and then we are going to go through what actually happened in the inquest. Okay, so um, I have to to discuss a case. Um, His history isn't important. His history is important. Corey McKee deserves to be known through every single part of him. If you don't appreciate the way I'm doing it, you don't have to be in here. Um, Cherry Bomb, we are doing a missing person case from the UK next week. We're doing a whole case of cases from the UK, cases that need help, bigger cases, cases that you've never heard of. Um, So that's what we're doing from next week. So all of the um, lorries have this kind of, um, this measuring device that tells you how much like waste you're carrying, what the weight is, Um, what you've picked up from where and all of that. So it's really, really important and they do it. Now, when Biffa, the the, um, rubbish people, were originally asked, they said they had picked up 11 kilograms of waste, which is one stone 10 pounds. So they were saying, um, they were basically saying, well, we only picked up one stone 10 pounds of rubbish. So can you... It couldn't have been us, like we couldn't have picked him up. 
They later come back and said we got it wrong. It was actually 116 kilograms, 18 stone three. So that's a massive difference there. You've got one stone 10 pounds and 18 stone three. So that makes sense why they deleted that data, because I think they were trying to distance themselves from what happened. Now, the device used to record bin weights was reset the day before it was collected by police. They knew police were coming to collect it. Now, some concern has been raised by Corey's family about the accuracy of this data device. Detective Constable Morgan stated at the inquest that I thought it was highly suspicious. It was quite clear why I wanted to know those measurements and the date, but yet they wiped it. By wiping it, it put that data beyond use. Someone at the Biffa Depot did this on purpose. And that to me is a real worrying thing because if you, sh if you didn't know that you had picked up someone in your rubbish that was too heavy, that was out of the ordinary, that was unusual because they were used to picking up about one stone to three stone of cardboard, right? So if you all of a sudden have 18 stone, why are you not checking what you've put in there before you're crushing him? Why are you not, and why are you quickly deleting it before the police come for an investigation? At, behind Corey is a whole family of people that needed to know what happened. So that to me should, should be a criminal offence that they've literally uh, messed around with police, with police evidence that they'd already asked for. They knew they were coming to get it. Um, so we're now, let me just, um, yeah, that's one. I want to go into the inquest. So. I'm not going to go too far into it. There was massive searches done for Corey, but most of them actually centred around the the landfill. Now, they were taking large areas at a time, so they should be able to tell what load goes into what bit. Um, I'll stop hating, Wes. I've told you I love Mr Bean. I can't help it. Um, it's just how the cookie crumbles. Um, so they literally were searching one area of the landfill and then they were such another. I don't believe they've ever found any trace of Corey McKeague. DNA, none of it. Um, so I believe that's why some, so many people have questions. Thank you, Miss Behaven. You would think there'd be something, a particle, a speck, something. In these cases, in my opinion, and I don't want to be too gruesome because this is a man's life, he would have been put in with other materials such as cardboard and then compacted. So it would have almost been surrounding him which means the DNA would have probably been centred inside of Corey, um, inside of that, that collection. Now, there was a case in America where a, a girl was killed and put inside a bin, like the one Corey McKee got into by her ex-partner. Now, she was then taken with the cardboard <clears throat> to a paper mill and put through several paper material uh, machines, um, and she was made into paper. And when the police came to the paper mill, her DNA was on all of the machines. And they hatched, they actually recalled about £30,000 worth of paper because the, for respect out of the family. Um, so you would think there would be some DNA link somewhere. The reason I'm telling you, because you would think, um, yes, yeah, so she was taken to a place where they recycle cardboard and make paper um, and bits of cardboard and stuff. Um, so this is what happened to Corey McKeague because he went to a landfill. I'm talking about a different case, but I'm saying there was literally loads of DNA of hers left on all of the cutting machines and all sorts. Um, none of her actual body parts were ever found because she was, she was already made into stuff, um, which is just horrific, but traces of her blood and DNA were found on the machinery. Um, so I would imagine... What you have to ask yourself, right, and one of the things I want to talk about in a minute, which I'll do it in a minute, actually, let's talk about the inquest first, and then I want to talk about, um, we'll do the inquest findings, and then we'll talk about Corey. So, mm -hmm. the inquest was held in March of 2022, and was told that Corey McKeague developed problems with alcohol after his parents separated when he was 10 years of age, and his friend died on a train line when he was 15. Petrol bin would be the bin itself. The petrol bin would be in the bin itself. Are they numbered? What the numbers? What, can you rephrase that question, Susie? I'm struggling with a little bit with the thing. Um, the inquest was also told that Corey was a heavy sleeper when drunk. 
Corey's best friend, Paul Robb, who served with him in the RAF, told an inquest in Ipswich that Corey said he'd slept under bin bags before, following a night out in Litchfield in 2014. Thank you for the Hutmies, guys. Bin lorry driver Martin Thomas Thompson, sorry, who tipped a bin in the area at 4.19, for those of you who are asking what time the bin was collected, told the inquest he had checked inside the bin before tipping it and that nobody was inside. But police do not believe that Mr. Thompson actually did check the bin because he couldn't have killing. Um, now, the statements made at the inquest said it is a culmination of the evidence that's held in this case. We know now that the bin weighed 116 kilograms. We now know it was extremely heavy weight for that particular bin on a Saturday. We found no other explanation of what could have been in that bin that would have constituted that weight. We have the additional evidence of Corey's phone tracking the bin lorry on its journey. Um, yeah, of course, Sean. The chance of, um, sorry, and then Andrew Graves, a product market manager for waste vehicle manufacturing firm Dennis Eagle, said the chances of someone surviving inside the back of the bin lorry were slim. So the bin have been there with numbers, so no matter what the weight is, DNA would be left in the bin, would it? I, from what I understand, no trace of him has ever been found in the bin and it's never been reported he's been found at the landfill. You would think that would have been thoroughly checked. I wonder how many times that bin had been used in the meantime, which may his DNA may not have been on there. Touch DNA is likely to be on the products inside the bin with him, but it's unlikely if it wasn't checked because the bin company was straight up lying, saying, oh, you know, it was only one stone of stuff we took from there. He couldn't have been in the bin. Um, so I just wonder, Susie, how much of time had broken between the both. Um, <coughs> So he said the chance of survival is slim, but if anything, suffocation is the most likely cause of death if a person isn't immediately crushed. Sorry for that, guys. I know it's horrible. Mr. Graves said that 30 tonnes of force is exerted during each compaction cycle in the back of a bin lorry, each lasting 18 to 20 seconds. If someone survived until the lorry reached a waste transfer station, they would have to keep above the waste as it was being tipped out. He said there was 10.8 tonnes of waste in the bin lorry in question, and it comes out like an OXO cube packed in tightly. Pressed to give a percentage of chances Corey had of survival, Mr. Graves said, I could only give 5% at an absolute maximum. The inquest also heard evidence from BIFA representation, um, represent, a rep representative that over a period of six years, there had been 740 incidents of people in bins. 740 over six years. A home office pathologist explained that Mr. McKeague had tipped into the bin. He would have been crushed or suffocated within minutes and may not have known anything about it. <laughs> Thank God. Now, they're not all people who've died. They're people that have been found, like when they've been picked up the bins, etc. The five men and five women on the inquest jury recorded Corey McKeague's cause of death as compression asphyxia in association with multiple injuries. They also found five contributing factors to his death, which were excessive alcohol consumption, two, climbing into an industrial bin, three, an effective search of the bin, ineffective search, sorry, of the bin by the waste lorry driver, four, ineffective locks on the bin, stopping humans getting in, and five, poor visibility through a clear window on the bin lorry. No, he's not been found. No. Nigel Parsley, who was the senior coroner for Suffolk, sent a report to the Prevent Future Deaths to four businesses, the British Standards Institution, the Container Handling Equipment Manufacturers Association, Dennet Eagle and Biffle Waste Service. A coroner had the legal power to write a report following an inquest demanding that they do things better in the future. However, as of last year, they still haven't made the steps they needed to in order to keep people safe. So here's what I think. I just think it's a little bit strange now that I'm going to say it. Um, I'm literally mean no harm to anyone when I say this, and this is just a guess. This is just my opinion. And I'm just going to say for this part of it, this is just for education um, purposes because I don't want to get in trouble. I believe that if Biffa and the man who actually emptied that bin was complicit enough to delete the data and perhaps remove any evidence from the bin and the back of the lorry, then perhaps they were complicit enough to hide the remains of Corey McKeague. I believe that at least the driver of the lorry would have had a lot of motivation to get rid of Corey McKeague's body because not only would he have not been in a great state, but he literally would be probably culpable for some kind of manslaughter um, for what he did. 
he didn't check the bin. He didn't, he literally didn't even, and that is another thing, Cherry Bomb, they, they could have going up to the bin, like literally reversing up to the bin, they could have hit him. He could not be even been in the bin. He could have been next to the bin and they could have literally, we all think we wouldn't panic in that situation, right? But this guy's in a massive lorry, right? And if he backs up and hits Corey McKeague, who's lying passed out next to the bin, he is not going to call for help. He just has to get him inside of that bin and then it's done. There is no way in hell that when every Saturday your machine logs how much weight you're taking from that Greg's bin and most of the time you're getting one stone of waste, all of a sudden you'll get an 18 stone and it's not on you to go and check what the fuck is in that bin. No way. So to me, there are loads of answers still that need to be given about what actually happened to Corey McKeek and exactly where is he now? Now, let, the landfill search that was done for Corey McKeague was one of the biggest in this country ever done. They were there for hours upon hours, week upon week, way bigger than what they were supposed to. And every time they come away with nothing, his parents would beg and they'd go back in. They spent they spent 2.1 million on searching those landfills, right? They come up with nothing. Um, pardon me. I think Corey weighed about the same amount that would have equaled that bin. Um, so I just think, yes, he was in that bin, but... They haven't been able to find him. 100% Wesley. And I literally think, I just could just call you Wes, couldn't I? It's all a bit um, formal. I honestly think they would have found a phone, a shoe, something out of his pocket. They would have found something. They found nothing. Um, I'm not going to talk about other cases at the moment, Sarah, just while I'm doing this case, because I've got cases to do something, but you can message me. Um, it just gets too broken up then because people are waiting for me to, literally people, it's too much. Um, no DNA, no nothing. Just that that's why I used that example for you a minute ago about the, the British girl, the American girl, sorry, who went into the paper plant, who was made into paper and cardboard. Her DNA was all over that place. Now, this was one of the biggest paper mills in America. They were making stuff constantly. So the fact that her DNA was still on there a week later when the police checked, even on the blades on the machinery, um, is absolutely um tells me that he would have been on the chomping bits of the bin. He would have been in the back of there. He would have been in the bin that he got into. It's just too much that there was no evidence left at all. Um, I think his parents have, have widely been accepted now. This is exactly what happened. Um, Shan, either message me on here or message me at Comic Crime or one word on Instagram if you want to send me photos and stuff. Um, where am I going? I've got a bang in a day. I think I need a... Um, I don't believe his phone was ever found, was it? Is it a question? Um, no, I don't believe so. His blocky Illumion. I don't think it's ever been found. I've got a fizzy drink here. Hey, Creamy. I don't drink water. It's key and missing M and searcher. Yeah, it's still not there. I'm just going to see what the latest news is on Corey McKeague. The latest, well, I checked today and it kind of said his parents have accepted um, and his dad didn't want people to keep spreading the theories around or going with certain things to make videos and stuff. Thank you, Tash. I'm seeing you for ages, Tash. You okay? Um, thank you for ever sent me that thing as well. So the last thing was that Corey's mum is still furious. They haven't changed any of the things to... Um, thank you for the rose. Um to the safety standards that they were supposed to off the back of his inquest. Um, I'm going to put some bigger pictures on. Um, I don't want to miss the end of. I finished Corey McKee's case. Oh, Tasha, I didn't think you'd have seen you for ages. Have you not spoke for ages then? Because I always see your little picture and I haven't seen your picture every, uh, for ages. Rory. Rory who, Sarah? I'm going to put some bigger pictures up and then for people who are staying about, I am going to go to the Mary Bell case, um, who was the 10-year-old killer. Why do you think a bit of Laurie involved? Will you hear the whole case, Julie? Um, because he fell asleep in the back of a bin and... My target? What's wrong with my target? Why are you... What's Which target? Why is it saying it's up and up good goal? Because I only just set that target, so I don't know why it's not achieved. Weird, isn't it? I don't know what's going on. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set it what it's at because I literally um I was to mess around halfway through the league. Um right, I'm gonna thank you for the Hutmies guys. Um we're gonna go on to the Mary Bell case in a minute for anyone who doesn't know that's quite an older case, but it is a case of a um it is a case of a ten year old who killed two boys. Um and I wanna get into a bit of the psychology before, behind what Mary Bell's life was like and maybe kind of what happened behind the scenes a little bit not that I've, I've got sympathy with the killer but I do think it's important sometimes we look at the nature nurture, nurture debate um, so let's look at these so this is the landfill being searched thank you for the bracelets guys I literally um. oh no I'm going back further than that aren't I that was a fire in London just ignore that picture that's coming up um so this is Corey McKeague. Um, I need to lift it up high so you can all see it. This is Corey McKeague walking towards that horseshoe belt, um, the horseshoe bend. bend. Um, this is the landfill search starting. These are the um, these are the theories that were discussed at the inquest. Thank you, Sean. That Mr. McKeague died following that accident. Thank you, Kelly that he died as a result of criminality, that he remains alive but held against his will and unable to contact anyone, or that he remains alive and he is deliberately staying away and does not wish to be found, and then obviously the bin one. Um, I think a lot of people don't talk about Corey at the moment because after so much of a search for him and all the things that happened, I think his parents probably deserve a great break a little bit. Um, an inquest, no, I mean the inquest. Um, which is an investigation into um, cause of death, especially when there's nobody. No, so we have an inquest. So there was an investigation by the police. They couldn't find him. And then the case goes over for an inquest where um, a medical examiner will come up with exactly what happened, how it happened, and kind of give kind of an educated guess based on the fact they don't have a body. Um, pig farms, yeah. So this is kind of the timeline if anyone wants to quickly look at that. Um, what part of the US are you from, Mallory? Yeah, tell me if you don't want to be fair. Again, that's him getting to the horseshoe bend. This is his. Sophie spoils sport. Um, this is him and his girlfriend. I don't know, Pammy. I think that's what his family probably think about every day. He got loads of food, yeah, and then he fell asleep in the door. It's all way for about 45 minutes before he went into the... Thank you, Pebble. Oh, this is Mary Bell now. We're going into the case of Mary Bell. Are you going to put the times up again? Yeah, of course I will. I'm having a quick vape anyway. He's very handsome. Thank you, Pebble. I just hate the fact that he didn't even know he was going to be a dad. And then obviously his girlfriend, but I suppose his girlfriend finding out um, did actually give his parents a part of Corey back. Um, I've just been up the sub goal every now and again because we are number two in that competition for knowledge sharing TikToker and I really want to be recognised as the top um, knowledge sharing TikToker I think I work really hard and I think um, out of all the competitions that's one I'd like to do well in um, yeah so he had a baby girl after he died I didn't want to go too far into that or show a picture or anything because that's not fine I can't tell you so <laughs> Rory Johnson I've got a bang in the day Thank you Kelly 2016 I think Rory I don't recognise that name off the top of my head. Unblocking. Um, Rory Johnson. Okay, I haven't seen that one. I have done Holly Gaza before. I wanted to push the app, the Holly, um, the Holly Guard app. Um, oh, victim, thank you for extending your, um, your subscription. I can't even speak then. The bit I don't get is, hi again, Dylan. Seven years ago, a young man went missing after night. Oh, in York, so that's eight years now. Oh, nearly nine years. The last time I checked on Roy Johnson Hatfield was a CCTV shot of him in 12th Friday. 
Oh, I haven't seen that case. I might cover that as part of my missing people case. <laughs>